This tent is on our famous invisible tub rack. And we are going to show you how to build it. <laughs> to get the little LN Hilux. Extra Aussie boy, normally just bend it over my knee. But... <laughs> Ready for some upcoming trips. Uh, lucky I had my safety thongs on. That could have been really bad. As well as putting the finishing touches on the 60 series. Okay, first time opening it. This episode, we have a few tips and tricks that you might find handy. <laughs> for your own right. Oh, how did you do that? I actually don't know. Yeah, bring it in, mate. Bring it in. Oh! Oh! <laughs> You're joking. Oh, you telling me. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I just went down to Metal Morphic and Dan's hooked me up with some steel. So we've got some 50 by 50, two mil, I believe. Press and fold. Oh, the tube. Speedwax tube. Because we're going to do but it's this tub rack out of tube just to be fancy because we have a tube bender. Outback Tourer tent, the 1.5. Straight on top. Yeah, same as Max Cruiser, mainly because we've got two trips to do in this bad boy. So a little bit of weight in the back wouldn't hurt anyway. Yep, it's going to get some weight in the back. The springs in here are actually really soft. I do have another set that are two inches higher, same spring rate, so I can just change them over pretty easy. Oh no. Let's, let's, let's go, let's start. Let's get into it. Oh. Could they leave us bloody merch? Yeah. We've got Outback Tour of merch. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> Did a bit of quick math in my head. I weigh 77. Kill a big, strong Aussie, Aussie boy! <laughs> but, I reckon it dropped maybe 10 minutes, so you could probably run against it. In mine, I made brackets that went down, bolted to the floor and bolted to the tub, and then we welded to them. TJ's not phased, so we're just going to weld straight to this inner skin. So we'll have it welded there, there, through the middle. It ain't, it ain't going nowhere, basically. We've got the angle of the dangle, and the dangle of the angle. If we don't have to cap it, and it's all welded, air can't get in, water can't get in, it's going to be sealed. If it's sealed, it can't rust. If it can't rust, it'll last forever. I won't match the rest of the car though. No. <laughs> Mac and Simo get to work prepping the box section, getting it ready to weld to the tub. Meanwhile, I'm flat out cleaning off the internal surface of the tub. So we can weld directly to it. Rough on the gear this oh, time. Sorry, I had 4.0. It's just annihilated. I quickly whipped around, cleaned off the paint on the tub so I can weld to it. Good because. Straight through it? Yeah, so when you. Well, one, you can weld through it because it's copper rich, so it's conductive. Two, behind, when you, when you sandwich two bits of metal together, it seals the two surface between it so you can weld around and. Everything inside there stays uh, rust free. What is it? Cut. Cut your way in, weld your way out situation. <laughs> exactly what's happening. Yes. So, someone, someone cut the first one, taking them short, which was me. Simo welded it, the end back on. We made it longer and cut it again, but. It was the wrong thing. <laughs> Extended the one that I already cut longer. I cut that now shorter, so now we've got two short bits. <laughs> Woohoo! We're about that much short. You're joking. Oh, I mean, nothing went wrong with that at all. Nah, nah. Like, well, good. That's like a bought one, that. Lovely. <laughs> Lovely works, didn't I? Oh, nice. Nice. Look, little gap, I feel that. That's beautiful. Just extra penno. <laughs> 100% meant to be like that. Time to get this rail welded to the internal skin of the tub. Too hot? Too hot. No good. Alternatively, if you saw our previous video doing this, you can bolt this rail instead if you'd prefer not to weld a rail in here permanently. <laughs> Finally, up to the exciting part, we're gonna use this fender. I have not used it yet. I've used it once for the cross member I made for that. Come up pretty good. Uh, it's definitely a learning experience, but 
That's why we're practicing on TJ's highlights because it doesn't matter. Because yeah. it's um, electric and hydraulic, you don't even have to bolt it to the ground. You watch, it's it's mind blowing. You could bend it, eh? You're just not as accurate. I could, yeah, but I don't have a gauge. Strong Aussie boy, normally just bend it over my knee, but. <laughs> Yeah, we'll use this. It's got a gauge on it. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is what the, the, the King Chrome weird things are for. Now, yeah. They're, they're a stand for your Speedworks bender. Now, I'm no expert at this thing. <laughs> I've used it once. I'm also sort of using this as a trial to see where things end up. So I've marked on this bit of tube where the die starts, and that's where the, that is where the bend is going to start. So we're going to go... Take up till it... So once it sort of starts to pull the pipe in, we set the zero, and then... We'll get to 65, just about 63 degrees. I think that's a pretty nice curve, don't you? Obviously you don't need to build this part out of tube. Last time we used like a box section. Box section. I think I just used 50 by 20 or something. Bit of a rectangle shape. Basically you just need a piece of steel that's going like that. So tube bend is perfect to do it. Experiencing a mad scientist in live action. Hang on, check this out. The aim here is to get both tubes pretty similar. So Mac has a bit of a scale drawing here and he hasn't used his tube bender much. So hopefully both pieces come out the same. Meanwhile, I'm just gonna throw some etch primer on this bare steel. Uh, I've sort of come up with it, but I've seen a lot of guys, they make like like timber jigs and draw things on stuff. Thought I'll draw it, so I've got my internal to internal measurement there. Straight edge and I've, that I can work off. Uh, I've got my tube to my height, 130. Now I know what i sort of got to cut out. <laughs> there you go. Measure twice, cut once, cut your way in, work your way out, I don't know. Well, there's that triple one abrasives, mate. Triple one abrasives? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the boys. No, actually, he uh, sent us out a few blades, but they've been really good, hey? Especially these Hellfire bits. Holy dooly. Like, I've been using that for like a week of like hardcore sanding. Listen here. Best discs ever. <laughs> <laughs> Do that. I don't know. Yeah. I actually don't know. Like that. Just marked up four right angle brackets that we're going to bend in your press. So I'm just going to cut them out with the grinder and then bend them in all in half and then they will wrap around the box. These little pieces are basically the feet that are going to get welded to the tube. Pretty stoked on that. <laughs> oh yeah, let's fold them. I'll show you this new cool tool. Let's see. This is a pretty nifty way to bend your steel because it's just a hydraulic press, eh? Hey? Marking center so I know where to fold. Bloody metal master! <laughs> Are you talking about me? I think this was about I think 250 bucks as well, maybe 300 I Can't remember what I paid for these. These are dimple dies. You'll see these in the upcoming K Truck episode. This is that a problem? It's very slow. But it's cheap. It's the same as a tube bender, like you just bend it with your fingers, but this is a little more accurate, eh? Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's exactly right. Like, a, <laughs> I, I, I actually strained my finger the other day too, so I kind of just have a little day off the, off the bending of steel. Voila. Wow. That is unreal. Might have to trim a little bit off, but that'll go in there like that. And we'll weld that to that. And we'll bolt this through that. Oh, he's going through it once. Whoa. A little bit harder on the pump, but can it do it? <coughs> Easy peasy, Japanesey. Oh, no, no. A <laughs> couple of tack tack. Bit of a pro tip here, guys. Make sure you can twist out your bar work. Now, so it can be removed whenever you want. Ah, lovely, look at that. Not bad, mate. Yeah, not bad, I ain't got nowhere. Oh, shit. Oh. That ain't going 
hardware. It's not now you've said it. Not now I've said it. I understand not many people will have a tube bender. Sorry, tube bender's there. No, I'm over here. <laughs> oh. <laughs> We've done a previous video where we show you how to make it out of box as well. And I have all the dimensions for that on a pin story on my Instagram because I get asked about once a week, <laughs> would you believe? I actually still have those arms. We originally made them for your nap. Yeah, and they're in the cruiser. Yeah? Then they went in my Ranger. Yeah. And now they're in my cruiser. Yeah, so they... Yeah. And they got chrome. Now same, they're chrome. It's the same one. Yeah. Same one. Alrighty, welcome to the next day, guys. Uh, we ran out of time yesterday. We had to go to Boys Dinner, you know, Thursday nights. But I'm heading back to Max now, Friday morning. Then I put the tent on the rack. Don't mind the uh, flappy boy. No hat, no play. So I'm told. Let's go. Alrighty guys, welcome back, new day. This is the morning. We ran out of time last night, went to boys dinner, you know. But we are gonna put the tent on now, just unpacked it. Big dog, how are ya? Uh, I had an idea for the month of June, February, March, give everyone who orders one a shirt. Sick. All right, cool. Sweet, and yeah, well they can just put in the notes what size they are or something. Sticker and a shirt. All right, so sticker and a shirt when you buy an Outback Tourer. Any of them, doesn't have to be 1.5. For March. The month of March. And you'll think, just put your size in the note and say TJ Maxx in it. <laughs> so we look sick for the boy. They're just a few tradies trying to get off the tools and I backed that because that's exactly what I did. So um, if you're gonna support someone, they're the boys to support this year. Okay, first time opening it. Fresh and daisy. Oh, free shirts, what do you oh, there's a free shirt. So yeah, like Max said, uh, if you order in March, you get a shirt. So the tricky bit is you've got to open it up before you mount it. All the bolts and stuff are inside of the tent. So that's your ladder. The ladder, everything. everything you need's inside it. So it was in the ladder. I found them, it was in the ladder bag. So we got a, that's a dimmer for the light, I think. And an on, or well, an on off switch. We've got some end caps. We've got the T-bolts. Oh! Cheeky little spanner, it's not King Chrome. <coughs> Allen key. <laughs> also not King Chrome. And if the bolts aren't long enough, these the cool part about these T-bolts is they're designed that you can just put another one in that's longer, which we're gonna do. <laughs> well, you don't have a long enough bolt, so we're going for a spin, but check out the Cruiser guys. Show car. <laughs> So, tub's all redone by Mickey. Ah, both sides are absolutely smicky, Mickey. Well, this was it. <laughs> hey, the hey. bloody odd strap. A bunch of things been bashed. There's the hole in the top. <laughs> oh, it's not great. Right. Oh, oh, yeah, no, nah, we'll, um, we'll clean that. Thanks, bloody guys on Facebook, eh? I oh, know, dodgy buddy. Oh, I can't believe I paid 250 bucks for this. Check this out. Show car, guys. Oh, there's no wrap on it at the moment, though. No, no play. I'm gonna have to get it. And this was all scratched up, if anyone remembers. Yeah. We're on the road again. Just going to get the bolts so that we uh, can bolt this tent on it. Back to the cruiser, mate. How's it feel? Bloody great. <laughs> <laughs> I missed the horsepower, I tell ya. <laughs> so, just down at our local auto parts store, and Macca has had a little bit of a genius idea here for the 60 series. What do you think he has in the store here? Oh yeah, they got them on. I've got I've got the wrong stuff, guys. Isn't it? Thank you. Don't want to put that cheap stuff on. <laughs> Don't want to put the cheap stuff on. Man. No, I can't get the cheap pay, mate. A few bloody goods on in hand. And we're out and about. Oh no, where's the sticker? Oh, broke my thong. Oh my god, the safety thong hasn't hasn't held up. Oh wow. Well, it kind of did. You got double that. I got double stabbed. That, oh. that, that went through my thong and slid the side of it. Uh, oh. Lucky I had my safety thongs on. That could have been really bad. <laughs> Time to get it in position. The 1.5 is a little bit heavier than the 1.2. Oh, it's not bad, not bad. Yeah, well. Two seconds in. We're on. The size. Let's try the bolts under it. Oh. 
Bob's your auntie or your uncle? Who knows this day and age? <laughs> Get your longer ones, 8 mil bolts. Boom. When this slots in, this bolt can't, it can't push up and out. And so you don't actually have to hold the top of the spanner, it'll hold it in that keyway. Slides down the rails on the tent. Yes. Yes. It's, uh, yeah. How bloody good does this look on a single cab, guys? I absolutely love it. Looks as though I may have to use the other springs. There's a fair bit of squat now that the weight is on the back. No big deal, I'll sort that out very soon. Let's see what this thing looks like all set up for the first time ever. <laughs> okay, so you've got yourself a new home, mate. And uh, I've got one of these, so I'm here to run you through. Run you through it as it looks in the distance of what the ultimate dad does. <laughs> Ladder on this one supports the bed. See this? Yeah. Do you know what that is? That that's just a bag to put things in. I'll put or the makeup in that one. Yeah. Makeup. Yeah, or your Crocs. But it's also a ladder cover for when you fold it up so you don't scratch yeah. the skylight which I've opened and I haven't rolled up, so. <laughs> That's the skylight. A bit of behind the scenes of Macca winding up the, uh, the uh, skylight here. Skylight, you know? So look at the stars. <laughs> Gaze into your eyes well, under the stars. Yeah. Spend a bit of time on this grass. <laughs> I'm glad you moved in next door, actually. Yeah, uh, it's the neighbor's grass. He uh, has good grass. Everyone does comment about it. It is absolutely amazing. He <laughs> oh, where'd you come from? Oh, just down there, actually. Oh, right. So there's a window on every single side of this model, which is really game-changing. Does not matter where game you Game-changing, he a, says. This is a game-changing Game-changing game build, this one. Look, if you've got a breeze coming and you're set up in the wrong direction, you won't get it, but you will in this. We'll go through this more in depth. We're about to go to camp in a couple of days. We've still got to finish a 60. We're doing that in this episode. Leave a comment. What do you reckon? Did I make the right choice of tent for the, for the LN? I think I've nailed it. it. I just feel like it fits this vehicle perfectly. Pretty fun. Okay, guys, time for the finishing touches on the 60 series. Uh, yes, that dodgy battery I put in. And as I mentioned last episode, with the dual battery VSR, I was like, oh, I wonder if I can jump my own car off the auxiliary battery. And look, it bloody, it bloody works, watch this. So I'll press this button. There she goes, Yoo! If you thought I was finished with the 60, you'd be wrong. There's a couple more things I gotta do. Okay, so we've just finished off TJ's tub rack. Now we're moving back into the 60. There's a few things I gotta finish off. We're putting the fridge in the back, finishing off the wiring there. My power box still hasn't arrived, but that probably won't be going in, unfortunately. But luckily, it's an Anderson plug fridge, so we can just plug it straight in and away she goes, running off that second battery. I really wanted to put these like solar shade screen things in to keep the heat out of the back. However, they're a 12 week wait. No one has them. So, see what I do there. It's super cheap, cost me bloody like 30 bucks and we're done. If it works out, I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Bit of a curtain, building a curtain for the front seat to back seat to just keep the light out. I have gone to visit, won the cruiser and got the fridge. I uh, went to Autobunk, won and go. Oh, a supercharged battery. I have been to Spotlight. I'm gonna get back to what's in here a little later. Been down and bought these. You can get them from anywhere between five and $12 each. These are gonna be my solar shades. I'm gonna get a little tricky with them. Should be able to cut this around and put it on the inside. How am I gonna mount it to the inside of the window? Now, majority of it's gonna tuck up inside the rubber and the rest of it that's gonna hold the middle. Ooh, this is another little hack from Bunnings. A magnetic door curtain, so that's gonna go here. That's gonna stop the fly screen, uh, the flies getting in. I have purchased suction cap hooks. Now I'm gonna modify these into this, and these panels should just suction cap to the window, basically. So I bought a little tub of oil, Aquadec oil, just to oil the timber here, just to seal it. What did all this cost? So I got the door curtain came to a total of $20. Okay, the paintbrush was $4.75. The suction caps, six packs, came to a total of $22. The oil was $12. Let's talk about how much these cost. So these were, if you're a club member, I think it was $12 each. Sunshades that you just buy for your front windscreen. 
and of course our battery. So we now have two brand new batteries. That really added up. So this was 300 bucks to get the battery. 105 amp hour on the left, 95 amp hour on the right. Put it on the outside of the glass, traced around. Now the outside of the glass is usually larger than the rubber and things on the inside of the window. That's a good thing because you want it a bit larger so it can tuck into these rubbers and corners. It's gonna help hold all your edges in. So, so far, so good. I marked it out, cut it out. That's literally the first one I've done. You need to leave the edge cut like that. You can sew an edge, a bit of material onto the edges, which I'm gonna have a crack at doing. You can use some tape, like some gaffer tape. Just put some gaffer tape around the edge. And then I'm just gonna cut in the suction cap hook. So it's really quite simple. Um, might not look as good because they got the fold lines in there, but you know, for 30 or 40 bucks, it does the job, eh? <laughs> time to lay some dime bags on these solar shades. <laughs> Still don't know what these stools are for, but they hold the thing for sewing. I don't know, I think I need a better workbench than this. So I might take her inside, eh? The Elna. It's almost like a uni mig, but different. Just like a TIG, you know, you got a foot pedal. Okay, now that's, oh, that's, okay, so that's, that's foot to the floor. That's as fast as she goes. It's not going, any, it's not going any quicker than that. So much torque. Time to do a little bit of sewing, eh? I know, right? Surprisingly, Macca does know how to sew. So he's put the edge around and now installing each suction cap through the center to keep it firm on the window. And boom, just like that, you've got your own budget set of solar shade. The crimp power box arrived, but it's the wrong one. <laughs> this is the bigger version. The one I ordered is about that big. This is cool, it's got heaps of stuff. I'm not giving this one back, sorry guys. <laughs> I'll put this in the gay truck. It sort of fits sideways, but that's, yeah, not ideal. We're going touring. We're taking the two most reliable old Toyotas wherever the wind takes us. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned next week and we'll run you through the finished product from Cape York. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to Cape.